morning, everybody. Uh, nice to be back with you again. And for those who don't know me, I'm Les, and I'm part of the uh, five o'clock congregation normally. It's just uh, before we come and open God's word, let's just bow our heads in prayer. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, as we come to uh, refresh our hearts through your word today, we pray that through your spirit you would uh, just open our eyes, open our hearts to see and understand uh, the great messages of truth that we find in your word. And as we open them, uh, speak to us, each one, so that we will be challenged but equipped more and more to serve you as your beloved children. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. In case you haven't realised it, Easter's not that far away. So um, I thought it'd be great just to pick up a passage that we often hear of at Easter time and uh, just to refresh our hearts and our minds on what God is um, saying to us. And this is one of those passages that is probably more um, focused to uh, believers and um, reminding us of how God is in total control and what Easter is all about. And Easter is not, and the message of Easter is not, about what the world says it is. We might think it's nice what the world says, but the world has a problem. And that problem is sin. The message of Easter is to remind all of us what we know to be true and then empower you and I to share this message of hope, to share the truth about what Easter is all about. It's about what God has done once for all by sending his son into the world to die on a cross and to be raised to life eternal. So we have this message from the prophet Isaiah. God is speaking very clearly. He is foretelling what his own son would do. Despised, rejected, punished, will die. But also in this same passage, the hope of being uh, raised to glory. And this is God's plan. Notice that it's the prophet Isaiah, he wrote this probably 700 years before even Jesus was born. And here it is, very clearly, what was going to happen. The death and resurrection of Jesus, we call Easter, was not one of those things that God suddenly said, oh, hang on, it's all mucked up, what am I going to do? I'll have to find something else to fix this mess. No. Salvation for sin was always part of God's plan. And here it is, 700 years. He tells us what is going to happen through the trial, and the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Refreshing our hearts. And giving us a great sense of joy as we know King Jesus. What he suffered for us. How it all fits together. He is the servant that Isaiah talks about. He came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. As God said in the very first verse of Isaiah 52, 13, See my servant will act wisely. He'll be raised and lifted up and highly exalted. So the prophet's words will come true. 
It's interesting also to understand and to realise that Jesus was very familiar with these words. Okay, he, he wrote it, so he should have known it. But we see that throughout his ministry, Jesus, very familiar. When he went to that temple that time, and they handed him a scroll to read, and he opened it up, and he read from the prophet Isaiah. Okay, it was later on in the prophecy of Isaiah 61. But Jesus, he opened these words and he read it to them. He began to them by saying, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus knew what was going on. Jesus knew what was going to happen to him. And yet he still walked the path to the cross. He knew what he was going to go through, the pain, the anguish, the insults, the suffering, humiliation. And yet he took that journey. His journey was always part of God's plan, the salvation for sinners. It's the only way, only way for any sinner to be restored to being part of God's family. God demanded a price. The punishment for sin is death. Jesus took that punishment. He died in our place. Here, Isaiah is telling us how gruesome that is going to be. How clearly it was going to happen. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. There on that cross, he would give his life as for sinners, the ransom, pierced, crushed, were in our iniquity. His hands and his feet were pierced by the nails. They also thrust the sword, sorry, not the sword, the spear into his side and the blood flowed. Blood that would cleanse us from our sin. Pierced for our transgressions. But even more, he took all this for you and for me. We read how he would remain silent. They would ask him questions at the trial before the Sanhedrin. You know, that was just simply a mock trial. They all, the, the Jews always knew what the outcome was going to be. They were going to get him. Nothing that anybody would do. And you notice that as they asked him questions, he wouldn't answer them. He remained silent. He just stood there. Though they challenged him, he would not answer. Nothing would change their mind. And yet it was all part of God's plan for his son. It's only when he got up before Pilate, and Pilate was um, not real confident about doing anything either. He wanted to wash his hands, and he did eventually. But Pilate would ask him a question. But even here, Jesus wouldn't say, yeah, you're right. He would go back to him and say, well, uh, 
Yes, it is as you say, putting the words back in their own mouths. But he remained silent. Pilate would wash his hands. He didn't want to be responsible. It's very interesting that um, as Pilate was in this dilemma of what to do, Pilate's wife actually said to Pilate that uh, warned him not to have anything to do with this innocent man. And Pilate eventually said, I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your responsibility. It is. It is our sins. Of course he did. It was God who took the only steps that would save sinners. But notice also in this passage in Isaiah, it talks about uh, assigned a grave with the wicked, with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. What happened when he died? To fulfil this prophecy... The rich man, Joseph, came and asked for the body and he took it down and he treated it with respect and buried it in the tomb, in his own tomb. Again, fulfilling what the prophet Isaiah had said. All part of God's plan. All part of God's plan for you and for me. Sinners saved by grace. Sinners freed because Christ has died for us. And notice how in this passage also Isaiah keeps telling us this very great and wonderful truth. At the end of verse 6, the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Again, In verse 11, he will bear their iniquities. Over at the end of verse 12, and he bore the sin of many and made intercession for their transgressions. This is to remind you and I of what Easter is all about. God's plan come to fulfilment in the death and resurrection of Jesus. All that he suffered for you and for me. But that message is still going out, isn't it? We've got these... Whoops. Okay, don't wave your hands. It'll be all right. I did it on the first service too. I don't know where I went. That's why you've got events happening in the church, haven't you? You've got the slip and slide... Looks dangerous to me. You've got the pancakes in the park. Outreach, evangelism. What are you going to do? Just give them a pancake? Say, have a nice day? No. More than that. When they slide down the hill and can't stop and you pick them up and put them back at the top of the hill to have another go, and that's only the parents... What are you going to do? You encourage them and show that you're excited about Easter. You're excited about the truth that you know of what King Jesus has done for you. He's given his life. It is a gruesome message. And it was your sins, my sins, that nailed him to the tree and his blood shed. But the prophet Isaiah has some positive news as well, some exciting news. It was always part of God's plan. You were always part of God's plan. You sit here saved by grace because you were part of God's plan to have that happen to you. All because of the grace of God. So it was the Lord's will, God's will that his son would die as the prophet Isaiah foretold, to crush him, 
the guilt offering, dying, but also being raised to life. As verse 12 tells us, Therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he has poured out his life under death, was numbered with the transgressors, for he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. He bore our iniquities. He died, and he was raised. The portion among the great. He was exalted and sits at the right hand of God, there pleading our case with our Heavenly Father. Not looking at us and saying, hey God, that bloke's a sinner, but saying to his Heavenly Father, look at him or her. And you see me, because we are washed with the blood of Jesus. We are God's beloved children, adopted into his family. He was raised just as the prophet Isaiah foretold. He sees the light of life, exalted to glory. Through his death and resurrection, all part of God's plan, the plan for salvation for sinners. Jesus was and is the only one who could satisfy the judgment of God. He had to die so that we will live. So what do we do? As we've said, evangelism is, is a key element at Easter time, but it's all right every other time of the year as well. We need to share the hope that we have. But notice in this passage, it's already been used at least once, I don't know of, as a tool for evangelism. And it's in the scriptures. You're all familiar with the story of the Ethiopian riding along in his chariot and then Philip is sent by God. Well, that's what happened. The Ethiopian is riding along in his chariot and what is he doing? He's reading from the prophet Isaiah. He is reading this part of the prophet Isaiah. It's in Acts 8. But he doesn't understand it. So God in his sovereignty grabs Philip through the Holy Spirit and sends him to run alongside the chariot and to hear what the fellow is reading. And Philip asks him, and excuse my, my paraphrasing, but do you understand what you are reading? And the Ethiopian says to him, how can I understand unless someone explains it to me? Here is evangelism at the coalface. So Philip, starting with this passage explains it to him, but then goes on to point him to Jesus. And through the grace of God, the Ethiopian repents and believes and is baptised. Evangelism works when God is in control. But this is what it's all about. Philip was able to share the truth and God did the rest. The Old Testament, especially this passage from Isaiah, tells what God was going to do years later. It tells us of God's plans for salvation. You and I, as we sit here, as believers, we're in that plan. 
we're enjoying the blessings. It was gruesome. It was a horrible description of what was going to happen to Jesus. And it did. But he gave his life as a ransom for the sins of many. And this is the good news. He died. He was raised to life. He died so that we will live as we repent and have believed in Jesus. By his wounds, we are healed. Though Jesus suffered, though he died, he was raised to life, and we enjoy the blessings. This is the good news of Easter, but it is the good news of every single day of the year. It was our sins that nailed him to the cross. By his blood we are healed, washed clean, and he was raised to life for us. He gave his life as a ransom for the sins of many. Enjoy the blessings, but also share the hope the good news of what Easter is all about, but also every other day of the year. Let's just bow our heads in prayer. Let's pray. Mighty God of Heavenly Father, we see in this message from the prophet Isaiah the gruesomeness, the horror of what was to happen to your own son, what you were going to do to your own son that by his wounds we are healed by him giving his life as a ransom for the sins of many all who repent and believe in him enjoy the blessings of life eternal he bore our sins heavenly father you laid on him the iniquity of us all as we believe the message of truth, as we enjoy being adopted into your family as your children, help us then to share the truth of what we believe in, of who we believe in, our wonderful and blessed Saviour Jesus, that by his grace we are healed. And we just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.